Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Before we get started, please take the time to subscribe, then click on the bell icon to get notified of our future videos. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Well, hello everyone. This is Rob Scribner and welcome to RV Talk Radio. This is a late show for us. We've never done a show quite this late, but we're fortunate to have some great guests tonight. So we're going to record this show and we'll also have it on our Monday playing. So today, as you can see on the screen, we have the wonderful Mr. Uh, is it, do you go by Papa Drew? Papa Drew. Yep. Papa Drew. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So Papa uh, uh, Drew is actually, uh, we just met and he goes, hey, do you know this guy named Ross? I'm going, huh, let me think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway, we connected and we thought it'd be kind of fun to do a show tonight. So we have the, um, um, I want to see if I say your the name right. The, the Prey, right? The Prey, yeah. Yeah. So I, I was telling him, for some reason I kept thinking you had an L in your name. So I kept saying the Play. <laughs> and then when I'm spelling it out on the screen, I'm realizing, uh, oops. <laughs> so we today we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. There it goes. <laughs> and let me turn down. I'm just doing the one thing I told you guys not to do is to uh, turn, up, turn down your volume. It's okay. I did the same thing. I know the guy up top is really holding back right now. He wants yeah. to say a couple words. I, 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 he I just, he's waiting I'm for his good. opportunity to talk about his beard. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm just doing all right, man. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> There's a little biker beard right there. Darn right. Well, you know, those guys in California, it's like, they're just yeah. got to be extreme everything. I know. Yeah. Every, I know. Extreme. Extreme dogs, extreme so, electric car. <laughs> So actually, we have we have a lot of things in common. All, all of us here is some of us have been full time RVers, and then and then uh, I know Ross um, and Heather, you kind of did the same thing me and Sherry did. Is as we're on the road, we kind of threw our arms up, saying, "You know, this is this is expensive. I may as well buy a house." <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it's like the same price for a house. So we bought a house, and we still RV. We love RVing. Um, yeah. but, uh, we, uh, we do it from a base and then, um, drew up above there. He's, he's starting from a base. Is that correct? Yep. We, we have a bricks and sticks and we bought a used RV out of a rental yard. And the rule was if we buy this, we need to go out once a month, no matter what, and go RV in and bring the family close together. Yeah. So what kind of rig do you have? We have a duct tape and bailing wire. <laughs> 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 no screw matches. You fix it. You drive it. Class C Tioga, thirty-three foot. It's a V eight, so we push it up the hills and it coasts down the other side, but it gets us to where we're going. Yeah, sweet. And then uh, now, uh, Ross and Heather. Now, uh, uh, you know they're, they've come under hard times, and they had to get rid of their RV. <laughs> yeah, we, such we, hard times. We just kind of like, uh, you know. We had a residential refrigerator in there, and uh, so we put a, one of those propane refrigerators in there, Yeah. and we just lit it on fire next to the refrigerator and went up, and we just like insurance money. It just is a lot easier, you know what I mean? I, yeah, right. well, you know, if you're like me, I was underwater on mine. That's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to burn mine down. So I know. So I'm going to get my money. Yeah, it's easy. I mean, it, you just got to get it a little bit. <laughs> Lola did find a very, no, she did, very good No, she home. did good. They, were, they did good. We just sold it. And uh, we were just, you know, the parks were getting ridiculous. I don't know what it was. It was like, I really felt like it was price gouging. I mean, they just went up and up and up. And the more people that RV, the more they go up. And it's like, ask Drew right now how hard it is to get a park. Drew. Oh, you I know. can't get a park. I was, I was monitoring the chat right there. Sorry, you can't get a park here. And, and I have stuff on my channel, Papa Drew's Family uh, RV channel. Um on how to like kind of trick the system so you can get reservations you have to go six months out and it's a rolling reservations
But there's a way to kind of game that system or else you're just not getting in unless you win a lottery. They do lotteries here. They so do what? They do lotteries <laughs> in California so you can oh, go camping. Not good at all. So they'll have a park full. You, If they people check out or cancel their reservation that day, you can't book online to get that spot. You have to physically go down to the state park and either one talk really nice to the ranger or like Doheny, you have to do a lottery and it's the lowest number wins that spot. Oh my god. You're doing it. You can get in the park. Now, now I heard it all. This, yeah. this is ridiculous. I've never heard that either. That's insane. Yeah. I wonder if people are getting solar panels on their vehicle uh, their, or their RVs and boondocking because there's like no more spots to do. I, I mean, there's no more. It's it. It's like gone. Everything. California. Um, even where you're at, Rob, Arizona, everything's just mobbed. Oh, well, Arizona? In Arizona, everybody lives in our desert. <laughs> yeah, they're, just kind of like, yeah. they're cracking down here on boondocking because of the homeless problem with all the RVs. They're not letting people stay on the side of the road anymore. They're towing your RV or they're ticketing you or the neighbors have just finally had enough of people pulling into the residential neighborhoods and they're well, starting to revolt. Well, you're paying a six hundred dollar a month HOA, and his RV is parked behind you uh, with barbecues. <laughs> well, and you got to pay, which is not really fair to you. But you know, I figured if you have an RV, park park it more or less in the woods, and, and, and there's no one's complaint. You pick on the side of the road where people pay a million dollars for their building and their taxes. That would, even, I mean, that would kind of bother me if I, I, don't, I, I wouldn't pay that much. But if I did, that would bother me. You know, being in I, that building. I don't know what woods look like. I came out to North Carolina. <laughs> Ross and I was flabbergasted. There's a million trees out there. Yeah, they have sticks and twigs and stuff on them, pine needles and pine cones. It was like completely a different world out there. People, <laughs> people actually drive slower down here. You know, yeah, slows down. That's because they're all old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are. yeah so yeah. Uh, by the way, uh, Drew, we have to be careful because you know um, uh, Ross is kind of an old guy, and it's kind of late for him. And uh, yeah, well. I turn into a pumpkin at 8 o'clock, so this is, like, super past my bedtime. <laughs> so for those Wait. of you who are catching us on the West Coast, it's actually 11 o'clock over where you guys are at. What state are you in again? North Carolina. North Carolina. And, uh, yeah, so uh, me and Drew haven't made it. It's only uh, 8 o'clock here. Yeah, we're going to go to the bars after this. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> go He's to the bar. He's he, it's, except I told him I, I'm not going over there because the ground's shaking over there and I'm not going over there. You know, it, it, we don't mind it. Over, it's it's kind of like one of those old motel beds where you put the quarter in. <laughs> that just kind of shakes on its own. You yeah, never yeah, know yeah. what you're going to get. It's just all kind of fun and games. Yeah, yeah. So, a quarter. I, I was telling him, I said, they have to have that mega quick pretty soon because then my property value will go up because I'll have a. Uh, you know, uh, beachfront property here in Arizona. There you go. You know, yeah. if California were to fall off into the ocean, it would just clean the streets of all the <laughs> That's feces. Right. That's one way of getting the state clean. That's true. There you yeah. go. Yeah, so no one would do it. Okay, so I, we do have to talk about RVs here a little bit, guys. So the first subject, uh, which was kind of interesting, I was talking to Ross a little bit about it, and he goes, why didn't I think of this earlier? And I've met people who have done it, but... Um, a good, you know, a lot of people always look into either e-bag or do work camping. Uh, but another great career is, is doing RV repair or refrigeration certifications and, and learning how to repair, um, uh, propane and, um, uh, RV refrigerators. So, um, Ross and I were talking a little bit about, he's been getting into and having an interest in doing RV repair. And, uh, uh the one note I'm going to bring is I have some folks that I know that uh, uh, I did some videos for them where they uh, actually stayed in the same RV park and uh, <laughs> noise st stayed in the same oh, RV yeah. park. They put some uh, credentials on their car. People saw him in the park and he had work all year round, year round. It was like 90 to 100 units. There was always work for him and, and enough work to actually make a good living. And so uh, uh, I want to let Ross have some time to put his two cents in of what he's observed about doing RV repair. Well, I learned how to repair my RV from Drew, that guy on the top screen right there drinking coffee while I was trying to do this interview. <laughs> and um, I learned a lot from him, you know, and what to do and what not to do, and especially the black tank stuff. <laughs> no, seriously, we had an RV, okay? 
And the thing would break all the time. We bought it brand new. I wrote a seventy thousand dollar check, and that would be the last check, the last RV. I'd buy brand new. I always buy a used RV, yeah. and maybe not as big. But every time I did, I got a thing called a warranty through a company. <laughs> I won't say the name. Okay, we had a warranty, right? Mm -hmm. And when we got it, once you, once you pull out of that uh, place that you bought it from, you're on your own. There's no lemon laws on RVs. And I was like, this something, something. This is not right. They're really ripping people because you, you're stuck. You you have to know knowledge about RVs or you're going to be paying a lot of money Absolutely. for a, a guy to see it. And there's no tax. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. They're like two months behind. I said, you know what? So I started fixing my own RV. Yeah. And I was like, I got aggravated after years of fixing my own RV, sold it. Now I fix RVs because I was like, I bet you there's a lot of money in this because there's no one doing it. And that's yeah. the other thing. For full-timers, it's very hard to take your rig to a shop exactly yeah. and it this that's why he ended up doing most of the work on lola himself because we couldn't just take it from this one spot and take it into the shop to be worked on plus we, had a, plus we had another rv we redid a class a we redid uh like years before that too so we have that had less trouble <laughs> yeah the older one had oh, two, a 2000 you get a 2016 it was like falling apart john I have something to say here. We blew out our converter down in one of the state parks here in Southern California. I'm not going to say what state park. I don't want to throw them under the bus. But we blew out a converter, and as Ross and you guys know, if you blow your converter out, we had no AC and no DC in our rig, right? None of the lights would work or anything. It was a bad converter. So I walked up to the ranger, and I said, hey, man, I got a blown converter. I'd like to get a mobile RV repair person in here and just you know fix the problem. It'd probably take 10 minutes just to replace the converter. They would not let a mobile RV repair person come onto the state park. I physically had to take my RV out into a parking lot somewhere so somebody could work on it for 10 minutes and then come back in. And, you know, I'm, I'm from the Marine Corps, so I made my wife and little girl, we just got our lanterns out, our flashlights, and we made the best of it. We did not let that stop our little, you know, two-day camping trip. But what a bummer that they you just can't have them come in to a state park, do a real fast repair like that, and then come back out. I mean, it's just kind of ridiculous. They do the same thing to me too. It's like I go in some some parks, and they're like, um, it, it, you know, that you got to like make an appointment. I'm like, make an appointment. The guy has no hot water. I mean, he's gonna leave your park. You're making money off him. Let me come fix it. I mean, I I get I get this I get the runaround. It's like I don't understand why they're not letting. I mean, you would think that a service like that would keep them in the park longer so they don't have to go a month and spend it at the dealer. I mean, they're in their park. It's, I'm helping you out. But I, I just think the RV parks in general right now are getting a little, I don't know what to call it. I, I, I'm aggravated with it. Greedy, Sounds maybe. Right. Well, uh, mostly I mean, around our area. Mostly around our area. Oh, it's, I don't know it's, our area. oh it's here too. Yeah. Um, like all of our, if, if, like in the summertime, which is actually our winter here, but up north, all the uh, like thousand trails, you gotta you gotta get your reservations in months in, in advance because they they're it's just totally insane. There's not enough RV parks, period. From here, from Arizona all the way up to Washington State, um, there's only a couple of mom and pops that maybe didn't advertise that well, might not be full, uh, and uh, they will be charging f as much as they can get away with because they can. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. It's insane. You Rob, you said. We, do a, we, do a, we have a channel that does a review. My okay. channel reviews, um, sorry, my channel reviews RV parks all over Southern California and some in Northern California. So I give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've gone to RV parks that have posted stuff on their website that makes their park look like the Taj Mahal. And by the time you pay everything and you pull your rig in, it's a dump. And it's just really, really horrible. We have a park, I'm not going to say which one, that advertise that, you know, hey, we're dog friendly, we love kids, bring everybody down here. And when you get down there, it's on my channel, you can see it. It's no dogs allowed here on the grass. Kids aren't allowed in the jacuzzi. Kids can't swim in the swimming pool. And you've already paid your 65 to $75 a night, $100 wow. sometimes for hookups down here wow. on the beach. And they put all these rules in. And then when you go to check in, you tell them you're a Good Sam member. And they go, no, we need to see it from Good Sam. And they make you call Good Sam and fax them something from corporate into the office. Oh, hello. She, That's crazy. That's crazy. There, she had to say hi. She's done. <laughs> Sorry. Drew, I think, uh, I think uh, it's, 
That's ridiculous. Oh, I do. It, it's insane. I, uh, I'll never forget the first time I ever had to pay $75 a night and I was whining about that. And that was like seven years ago. Yeah. <laughs> seven years ago. Now it's nothing. That's a state park by 175 a night now. <laughs> it, it's common. If you hit a state park, it's, it's affordable. If you don't have hookups, um, Doc Weiler is, is really good down here, but you have LAX, you have planes taken off over your head. Um, True. What is the most expensive really park that you've ever seen in California? Because California's, what, what's the most expensive? That's I'm curious. 120 a night. Oh. Whoa. And that was a parking. That's a parking lot. No. That's grass, a parking lot. No, no grass, light poles. You got hookups. And walking distance to a very small swimming pool. No hookups. No, no full hookups. It, okay. But it was a, it was an asphalt parking lot. That's all it was. You know. Uh, Ross, you know, I saw you get some property there. I think you had to put a couple of RV spaces in there. I know. Well, they they you gotta uh, gotta be careful with that because it is wherever you're at now. They're getting on people for actually putting RVs and parking, and you can get huge fines now. Yep. And, actually, uh, one of the other RV another RV around shop. Here, he just got, got shut a, down. Like ten thousand dollar fine. I just heard. I just heard it from another place, but mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty serious. And they 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 don't they're pretty they don't. I mean, you know, I pull one once in a while and I work on it here and there, but it's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a state, you know, they're not living in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We have thought about opening an RV park though. And we, we have thought we about almost getting bought an RV park a couple years ago. Property and doing it. And Drew, we're, <laughs> Drew, Drew and I are thinking about opening our own RV park. Absolutely. Well, I mean, what are the things that I want to do on the RV park? The first thing, if I buy an RV park, the first thing I want to do is put maintenance in there for the rigs. So when you pull in as you're a snowbird and something breaks, you can have the park's maintenance go over and fix the RV. It's all about customer service, and this is it's lacking. I'm telling you, customer service out here is just lacking um, in the parks. The KOA I just stayed at, amazing customer service. Really good, friendly, clean. Um, it was the last video I put up on my channel, and it was I, I just recommend it. It was great. Um, but Most KOAs are pretty good. There's been parks out here that I just we just won't go back. Avila, uh, there's a place in Avila. They packed this in so tight. My awning was in the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I've been just, in places like that. I have video of this. A pregnant lady had to leave the park because it smelled like poop all over the place. She left. Go to go to uh, Myrtle Beach on Bike Week, then you come and talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> When they're doing wheelies about 100 miles an hour past your RV, about an inch from your RV. That was pretty rough. That that was pretty rough. I mean, in wheelies on like two a thousand cc bikes or 1200s. I mean, what? Like, and in the Harleys, woo! When they get them up on the fifth wheels, when they're going up in the toy haulers at about five o'clock in the morning, they're revving them. Wah, 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 I'm trying to get up from the toilet, spinning the tires. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I gotta get out of here. So, by the way, uh, Heather, you're kind of watching the the chat, aren't you? Yes. So if you see uh, something you want to read off or, or say hello to, feel free to. Okay. Uh, I, I sure will. I'm, I'm seeing them, I'm reading them, and then I get sidetracked. Uh, I had a little glitch over here, and I couldn't read off of some. But there is stuff coming through here, and I'm missing it. But we do have eight viewers right now, and there's a few folks I think uh, that you know and I don't, and some know Drew, and some yeah. I know. And <laughs> a Charlie. lot of them. Oh, my sister's on camp from Massachusetts. on. Uh, you got your, your did you put pants on today? I have pants on, yeah, because um, uh, sweet, uh, sweet travels. He told me, Jim said, Drew, if you're going to go live on the radio, wear pants. Yes. Aaron told me to change my shirt over at Jones Jones and Two Travel. He said it was standing up on its own. I said it was a friend of mine, and when I put it on, it felt like a hug. Serious, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okay, guys. So I want to change uh, subjects a little bit, um, especially. We got some longtime experienced po people here and some newer uh, folks. And um, in general, um, compared in the next, I'll go back, say, let's say in the last eight years, mm -hmm. what are your observations of what has been going on with RV channels and RV pages? Um, have, are you seeing um, a lot of repetitive stuff? Or you think some of the new channels are actually doing channels that are productive or are they just doing a channel to make money? Um, everybody, everybody thinks they're going to go on vacation and be rich because they have a camera, and it's not going to happen. Yeah. It's not going to happen. It doesn't happen. It's not reality. It, you know, it's not. Gonna, it's not going to happen. We, we have right now in our chat. I know because these are friends of mine. We have uh, 
uh, Sweet Travels is in here, Jim. We have Aaron from Jones and Two Travel. We have uh, uh, Dustin from uh, Wayward Wags are in here and uh, Kit. And these guys are all smaller YouTube channels that are really struggling to make it. Right. And they're, they're really trying and they're putting out great content. They're all great creators, but they're struggling to make it because the big guys are sucking up all the oxygen in the room. I, I think it, that's you, you, trying to band together with a bunch of them and do collaborations and help everybody out in the community. That's my yeah. that's my when job. You have, like that. you have too much competition, you run the other way. Yeah, I run the other way. I run head I, on. I, when I when we start a computer repair business, we didn't have any competition. We're making like three hundred fifty thousand dollars a year out of our apartment. No lie. But when a competition hit, we got buried. It was useless. You couldn't do a call. It, you couldn't do it for fifty bucks. Now, well, we still do call, we still do the service, but you know what I mean. I'm just exaggerating a little bit. But um, now, you get into the RV industry. Now, people are begging me to fix their RV because there's no one doing it. There you go. Just like YouTube, if someone's in that that niche that you you're trying to do, like everybody's picking a camera up and everybody's traveling, and and just like Rob and I and Heather, we both did the same thing: cameras and traveling, and the, the videos got washed out. Which it, it just you get buried in the searches. Uh, Anytime there's competition, run the other way. And a lot of people don't see that, though, uh, Drew and Rob. They, they just keep trying. I'm going to do it. Good luck because you're just fighting and never winning. I mean, you can you, you can still make it, but it's just just go in another niche, something you like, uh, still like, and you're going to be able to squeeze in a little bit better. It's almost like trying to fight the crowd. You can't, you know, when, you know they say, fight the crowd, you're going to lose. Run the other way. Start be unique. Start something different. Yeah. And that's well, what, you know, like we've uh... – I think all of us have kind of discovered diversity in, in the type of video, uh, <coughs> sorry, the videos we're doing and stuff. One, of, I did watch a show from, uh, I don't know if you guys know, Dan and Jen Nevada. Um, they, sure they, yeah. they were doing a show about ethics or something, uh, etiquette. And uh, one of the comments he made, which I, I really agreed with, was uh, uh, there seems to be two kinds of channels out there. There's like channels out there that want you to join them and become part of this sell your house do it get the heck out of it. and then there's the other ones that say here's our life if you enjoy watching our channel uh you no know, you don't have to join me but enjoy our stories and so it's kind yeah. of like two kind of channels out there it's like the ones out there saying misery likes company come on out come poop in buckets with us and then there's and the other and then poop in buckets <laughs> And then uh, uh, ninety percent of the ninety percent of the video of people that RV are not making videos. They're yeah, just they're RVing not. and having fun. Yeah, and, and it's do, blowing them away because I'll go out to a park and I'll say, "Hey, I do reviews on parks." You do? Yeah. yeah. Come check it out. It's free. Check them out. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, I just I think the bigger channels like uh, Traveling Robert, he's doing a great job. I don't think he's doing it to. To say, hey, look at this lifestyle. I think he's telling a story. And as a creator, everybody knows the story is the king. Everything feeds the story. And if you have a good, solid story, you're going to pick up an audience. <clears throat> yep. You're going to like what you're doing and what you're saying. If you're, if you're, you can have all the fancy camera equipment, the drones, all this other stuff. But if that story isn't solid and it's not a good foundation, Nobody's going to watch your channel. Yeah. Have you noticed that some of the bigger channels, they've all created memberships? Yeah. 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 See, I don't. Mm. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, if you, it's, well, I think they're doing it because Google ads are getting really, they're not paying out well. I mean, it, they put a lot of time and money into it. So they're, it's good in a way, but I don't know. It does take a I lot mean, of time, money, yeah. and resources to get, you know, a good, quality video out there people that worked that hard work their butt off to be where they're at they got probably ten thousand dollars in camera equipment I, I refuse to spend that much in camera i'm like i buy a little bit here i bought a nice we bought a nice uh 780d camera but that was you know that was like a thousand bucks but that was like one time i bought a camera in three four years you know yeah i got a three thousand dollar drone but i like the way that wayward wags is done i don't know if you've seen any of his stuff but dustin's doing really cool he's donating some of his proceeds from his store and his channel and all that stuff. He's giving it to, you know, uh, veterans and, and that kind of stuff, which is cool. And nice. then, you know, he's keeping some of it for himself, obviously, to, to, to take care of some costs. And then I think he's giving some back to the to the viewers. And that's exactly what I want to do. I'm going to copy you, Dustin, if I ever get uh, big enough and get monetized. It's I want to give back to the community, too. I want to give to the veterans 
for sure. I think that it's just kind of being a vet myself. And then I want to give back to the subscribers because if you really think about it, the subscribers make you the creator who you are. Yeah. And doing uh, collaborations are important. For example, um, uh, like you guys, I, I don't know why we haven't crossed paths sooner, but when you when we finally say, let's get together and talk, and, and, and here we are. And so a lot of the new channels out there uh, that only have 400, 500, maybe 1,000 uh, subscribers, call me, call us, and then we'll coordinate a show. We, as long as you have a good story, and all that it's like um we're willing to help um but i'm not going to call you <laughs> yeah. you know don't it's wait just, for me to, to help build your channel up contact me be i want you to be nice i mean be polite but most likely we'll find a way to work together and uh, uh surprisingly enough a lot of the big channels today started out at rv talk radio and so uh, we can be the foundation to help uh, get some people going if we get you 10 new subscribers or a couple thousand it's all good and, we want to get up to, try to get up to the 20,000 mark bro. yeah well, that's, that's, what, yeah, that's why we have you here we're here to take you to 20,000 okay we are v.tv sign up <laughs> i mean subscribe no sign up don't sign up subscribe that's right no sign up no sign up. Just subscribe. There's no. There's no fee. No, I I also no membership. Pop it through our YouTube channel, right? Yeah, but you, are you selling? Are you selling stickers? Start touching my arm. Um, we did that for. A we did bit. that for a while, actually. But yeah. we we sold like like a hundred or something like that, or eighty or something. But it wasn't. It just it's kind of slowed down. We stopped pushing them, and we got busy because we were building the house, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we. That's why uh, I gave up on stickers and went to poopy bags. <laughs> Poopy bags. <laughs> I love the poopy bag idea. I just don't like. I am like sending you a box of poopy bags. Yeah, I'm gonna I put those it. to the test. Oh, please I'm, do. I'm gonna put your poopy bags to the test with my Great Dane. And, and, and if you like them a lot, you could even give them uh, give a box or two away in your channel, and I'll make arrangements with you. That would be awesome, Drew. Listen, but what happens when it's warm when you pick up the poop, Drew? That's a great <laughs> answer. <laughs> It's seriously, I'm telling you, I've been, it gets cold where you live. You should appreciate the warm poop. My daughter, Gabby, she's like 95 out here. My daughter, Gabby, she, here. she's eight years old. She hasn't really picked up dog poop yet. The first time she went out and got Cleo's, put it in a bag, she picked it up and went, oh, it's warm. And <laughs> I, I, I told you. That's not warm. I'm not touching this anymore, dad. Get over here. <laughs> the, smell the smell doesn't freak me out. It's the temperature that gets me. Yeah. I think it gets a lot. Does the temperature get you, Fred? I was a CNA for 10 oh, years. She was a CNA. Go. She picks it up oh, all the time. So. She's, she's tough. Yeah. Good. Well, some days. But unless you put a spider next to me, then forget it. Well, I'm done. I know, I know, I speaking, think... about, speaking about creators, get back on subject. Yeah. I know that, um, Jones and Two Travels, he'll let you post stuff. Aaron's really cool about that in his... Uh, in his group, because it just helps his group. Um, I'll let you post anything you want in my Facebook group um, at papadrew.com. You can go there, go to my Facebook page, and you can post. If As long as you don't get out of hand with, like, adult stuff, I keep it really kid-friendly and stuff. I don't want to see any, like, inappropriate stuff. But if you have a channel you're trying to plug and trying to get bigger and you're working hard at it, I don't mind helping. I really like to do that. And I, a lot of these people that are on this chat will attest that I've reached out to about every single one of them and tried to help them out in some way, shape, or form. It's just how I, you know, that's what this we need to do. It's such a big heart. We, sure, come at I got a big everything. My trainers can get in <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Everything's bigger in California. Talking about stomachs. My stomach's pretty big. Look. Family friendly. I got Family to be. Talking about stomachs. You're Family skinny friendly. people. Skinny the first thing I met Drew, and he goes out of the. What did you say when I got out of the car, Drew? I said, "Boy, you're skinny." <laughs> the camera adds weight because and I. And you know what Ross said to me? He goes, "Boy, can I have some of what you got?" Hey, you're back. <laughs> That's what Ross said to me. That that made me feel real good. But then we went into Walmart, and I embarrassed Ross there. Yeah, yeah. What I what did I do at Walmart? I got you back. Yeah. Did you what wear you spandex? Embarrassed? Well, there was a lady. There was. So, so I'm just kind of off the cuff kind of guy, and there was a nice lady there. She was trying to sell the TVs in the back at uh, Walmart. Ross is standing next to me, and they got all the psychedelic swirls and everything on there. And this lady's really trying to sell this TV. And I looked at Ross and I said, "Man, that would look good on LSD." 
And she stopped her sales pitch completely, looked at me, had no idea what to say. Ross turned red, turned around, and walked away. I was rolling. I've never been able to get this man embarrassed. <laughs> Look at him yeah. right now. <laughs> that is great. Okay. Red, honestly. So I have another. I have, I, have, I have another question for our panel here. How has RVing changed through the years that really stand out to you guys? Good or bad? Freaking priests and perks are killing me. <laughs> yeah, well, got that. <laughs> what other things have changed? Like That's service. Service? Yeah. Do you remember the, the show with Lucy Ricardo, Long Long Honeymoon? It's an RV yeah. class. Remember how when they came into the park, the guy came out and he parked the rig for you? Oh, and they sweet. had the fence and all that kind of stuff. That doesn't happen anymore. No, I don't think that ever happens. I can show you where the spot is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember that. I used to go to some places with a guy. You'd follow him in his little cart, and he'd take you there, and he'd help direct you in. It was like, how yeah. nice was that? Yep. Yeah. They don't, well, they you don't know, do that. When we were RVing like, seven, like six years, seven years ago, they were still doing that in some parks. They were still walk, help you. It was, it was still pretty good. Yeah. But we, we were at the peak. Drew, we were at the peak time like you were. We're at the peak when you buy your RV. We're at the peak time where we've seen that major drop, and it happened in like two years, three years, and, and, it, and it's been it happened really quick. Yeah. I feel like it happened quick. I think uh, there's uh, the one improvement I've seen since 2006. I full time twice. Back in 2006, I was uh, doing internet marketing, and so internet was like unheard of anyway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so internet. the way we did internet back then is I had a HughesNet uh, satellite system. And every time we go to a park, I'd have to go out there, calibrate it, set up it. And uh, it, had a, it was a terrible signal, geez. too. But, I mean, if you went out to the beach or anything along, along Oregon and stuff, forget internet. You'd have to go to a coffee shop back then. And at yeah. least uh, maybe 75% of the parks now are at least got some kind of internet. Yeah, that's that's so so that is, that's an improvement. I can actually think of something positive. Drew, um, what do you do for internet? What's that? Yeah, we did that. I, I gave you a bunch. We did it. We did a trade. Ross and I did a trade. I, I do lighting for a living, and Ross needed lighting to light up his life at night so he could get that beautiful glow that he has. Oh, I see that. <laughs> yeah. So I <laughs> sent <laughs> I sent him a thousand watt LED, and he sent me a um, uh, what do you call a uh, Wi-Fi Ranger. Oh, I got that. Yeah, so I put that up in my roof, and um, now what I do is I broadcast out to because we have unlimited on our phones, and I hook the Wi-Fi Ranger up to it. Yep. So if you see me broadcasting out in the parks, you come over, subscribe to the channel. I'll let you jump on there, and you can have all the free Wi-Fi you want. Yeah, I, I used to do that too. I uh, what I liked about Wi-Fi Ranger, and I still have it, is like if you go to a thousand trails, a lot of times the only internet they have is at the community club. Well, who yeah. wants to go there, especially if you have to upload a video or something? With Wi-Fi Ranger, as long as you're within range, you can tap into that internet from there to the, to your RV. And I don't know how many places that had I, it came across that because I had Wi-Fi Ranger, I could pull the internet from the clubhouse and never yep. have to leave the rig. And I love that. Yeah, now they have a SIM card. So you can put a SIM card in there, a del uh, cellular SIM card. Yeah. You can pop it in there, and if you have a cellular plan, if it can't get Wi-Fi from the park or from uh, a free source like Starbucks, McDonald's, or Wally World, it'll switch over to the cell phone SIM card and pull it off the uh, AT&T or Verizon or whatever you want, and you'll get wow. it that way. Yeah. So what, why, can't you run a, why can't you run an air card and then ta pull your you can. internet off your air card into your Wi-Fi Ranger? Absolutely can. Oh, okay. To this, yeah. to this day, I can go online right now, right now, and the, the, the guy that designed Wi-Fi Ranger, I can get him to talk to me right away every time. And he'll talk to anybody like that. They're amazing. Company. They're amazing, amazing support. I said, I, the box kept rebooting. He shoved the update. He goes, give me the box number, shoved an update right through the internet. It's not a problem. I'm like, this is crazy. I've never got this before. I know last time I called, he goes, are you friends with that Ross dude? And I go, yeah, all right. And I go, does it depend yeah. how I answer that, whether I can get service? Yeah, <laughs> he's lost his mind. So 
totally lost his mind. I well, like Heather, the Heather, what are some of the things you've noticed that have changed through the years, good or bad or indifferent? I think that um, a lot of the parks are starting to improve their spots, like the, um, really? They, like where their paths are and stuff, they're, uh, they're making upgrades in the parks, and I think that's a good thing, um, not only for business, but also for when the RVers go in there, they're, you know, it's, it's more, it makes things more enjoyable, you know, unless, because sometimes you go into an RV park and it's all dilapidated and it's a mess and it's just, it's not fun, you know what I mean? And, and it's not clean, it's not, it's not a good place. You guys want to make some money? But they've been making a lot of, I've noticed a lot of RV parks changing things. You guys want to make some money? One more so question many, before you go into the money thing. So, uh, Heather, this is for you again. Have you, uh, in the past years that uh, we've been RVing, have you felt that the people that are participating have uh, improved or gotten worse as far as ethics, um, empathy, things like that? You think that's, is it getting worse or better? I don't know if it's getting worse or better. I mean, I- well, We've been out of for about two years now, right? When we were in the parks, it was pretty rough. Like when we lived full time in the RV, it was rough. It was a totally different world for us when we were living full time, yeah. as opposed to just weekend warriors. Yeah, I agree. You know? We had so much better time weekend warriors than full time. So much better. Yeah, because you know you go, it's you don't notice as much as you do when you're full time. Well, yeah. the drama starts. The drama starts. You start to notice people in RV park, and the drama starts. You're out of that <laughs> drama. Like, this one slammed the door. This one complained. This one. And then they start complaining about the fees, and it's like, well, I just got to live here, guys. I just want to get – and then you try to get work done. If you have a YouTube channel, you try to get work done, they bang at your door at, like, 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, yeah, what? I'm, like, in a call trying to work, make some money. And – but they – here's the thing. This is the main thing. I don't know if you – Really? This is the main thing. When you're in an RV park, and you guys will really follow me. When you're in an, when you're in an RV park, okay, and um, I lost my chain of train of thought. That's it. ADD, right? <laughs> You when, you, when you're in an RV park and people <laughs> bang on your door, they think, well, here, here's the thing. Most RV parks, everybody's on vacation, right? Right. So they don't know that if you're a full-timer and you're working your butt off to bang on your door to bug you, it's like, well, I got to work just like I'm at a job. But they would, it, they're on vacation, so they can't, they don't understand. Like, it, is, it is different. There's, yep. I think there's two separate. Um, I think it's bad to work in an RV full-time. Hey, 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 sweetheart, when you have 17,000 subs, you're going to get knocks on the door. I'm just telling you. You're famous. Deal with it. We're not famous at all, but we do get we did get a lot of people coming to visit us when we were in the parks. I'm yeah. A lot. Well, we yeah, you got the logo on the side of your rig. I know. Yeah, we had that big logo. That was, I, should, I already ripped that logo off after a while. I'm like, it's, it's a double-edged sword. You know what I'm saying? Yep. We yeah. did meet some very amazing people, though. Oh, yeah, we've met a lot of people. So did we, we really did. We yeah. really did. And we still talk to him, just like you guys probably. I mean, we met we met, met Drew from the camera. Yeah, we did. We did. Yeah. And, you know, there's, like I said, in the park, there's there's sometimes you get the really, really nice people who can take care of their site and they're respectful of the other RVers. And then you get the other people who are just not very respectful. They'll blast their music and they think like they're in the middle of nowhere and there's nobody else around them. Most of the time, we would get that if we were in a state park. And, we're, and sometimes you have the, you have the fires going and you're like dying. It's going in your AC ducts. The fire, you got to open your windows because the fire is so bad next to you. They're like, they're like 10 feet from your propane tanks. It's like, dude, put the fire on you. 10 feet from my propane. I can't even breathe in my RV. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we, I, have, I have different experience. The state parks, I have not met one person that's been bad in the state parks really? here in California. Yeah. Well, you're in California, and well, most a lot of people that are moving. I, I get it, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but I have, no. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, a lot of people travel there to visit from other states. You know, because they well, certainly wouldn't want to live there. Normal people coming in from other states. This could be it, because so we Cal do Cal 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 stand on the park, side of the road. What they do, and then you get a free park and free tents. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I didn't hear him. You just, you just in California, you tents on the side of the road. You just join them. They're all over the place. No, no, no. We don't do that. That's <laughs> so you've had, you've but no, had it, it, 
experience in the state parks than in the regular parks. I absolutely have. Really? For some of the KOAs, but uh, really? the state yes. park. Like, yeah. I'll give you. I'll give you an example. If you go and book, and I keep saying the name, but Dockweiler State Beach, their customer service is so above board, it's not even funny. Really? Yeah, they have secret sites. Check this out. Here's a, here's a pro tip. They have four sites that they don't advertise that are first come first serve. Okay. And, they, and when you come in and there's nothing there, they will do everything they can to try and get you into one of those four sites. And they're super, super nice. They have Wi-Fi at a state park. Are you kidding me? That's amazing. They keep the arguments down because they get the backup plan so they don't overbook is what they're doing. But, That's amazing. Yeah, but I'm just saying that for that state park to do that is, is amazing. Down at Silver Strand, they run a strict park, but they're super friendly down there. They're really nice people. But God help you if you put a fire pit on their sand. It's game on. They'll throw you out of the park. Yeah. Or put your dog on the stand. That, One of my favorite places that we used to go to was uh, Sebastian. Sebastian Inlet. And yeah, that, was, that was a state park. That's in Florida. Um, the people that ran the park were very nice. The facilities were not so good, but it's an old, it was an old park, you know? But you got to have a spot right on the water. You could, you know, float in the river the entire day. You could, I mean, it was amazing. I absolutely loved that place, except when there wasn't enough people there, then the water would start to smell like eggs. Yeah. Drew and I, no, we were, we're going to open an RV park, Drew. Okay. Um, we got some comments coming in. I don't know if you guys are noticing that, but um, Aaron, Aaron they, Jones and Jones and Two Travels, he wants everybody to meet up in Quartzsite. And I've been bouncing that around all the creators. I know I've hit Wayward Wags with it, RVDM. Uh, I know I talked to Jim today on the phone over there at Sweet Travels, and he's down for it. Aaron's down for it. And if we could just get these two on a plane out to Quartzsite, that would be On the plane? I'm on the other side of the world. <laughs> well, I'd love to see you. It's your turn. Just bring a tent and a bucket, and you're good to go. That's a yeah, oh, look it, that. I'll you. We'll take you. I'll we'll fly over there right now, and you let me use your RV. Look, we'll take a crate. We'll bolt a toilet seat on it. I'll cut a hole in it, and you can go to town. You're good to I'll go. go there. I'll go there. I'll fly a plane. You can park your RV there, and let me use the RV for two weeks. Done. What about my RV? Done. That's fine. Come come out and fix stuff. <laughs> fix <laughs> yeah, RV. Stuff. <laughs> my wife keeps crashing mine. Come fix my RV. I <laughs> <laughs> actually have a lot of friends that go out to Quartzsite in the... Um, I, I, I need water, though. I think what is it? The summertime or the winter time? Oh. They go there in the winter time, so yeah, they don't have to. You don't want to go in the winter time. <laughs> you don't want to go yeah. in the summer. It's, a, it's 110 right now. Oh my! You, you know, but it's a dry heat. <laughs> uh, yeah, but it's a dry heat. Still, 110 is 110. <laughs> <laughs> the heat's killing us here. You know, I started I started doing solar installs because a lot of people are calling for that now. Yes. Yeah, uh, I. Uh, Jim Stock. Yeah. Rent a van in a bucket. <laughs> Rent a van in a bucket? No. No. Down by Jim's the river. got a lot of experience with poop because he sells those poop bags for That's a good right. deal. That's why I figure if I could just get them to catch on instead of using the buckets, use a Ranger Rob poopy bag. Well, where do they go to Where do they go to find your bags? Like what website? Amazon. Oh, you have them right on Amazon? Yeah, we're big time. Oh. What is it called again? Poop. We're big time exists. <laughs> They're Ranger Rob poopy bags. Let's see. Um, I'm showing them on the screen. Ranger Rob. Yeah, you can't. Nice. You guys probably can't see it. Um, no, we can. Yeah, I go up here. Oh, yeah. I never took the green screen off, did I? Oops. So I'm going away. There, I'm gone. So, uh, yeah, Ranger Rob poopy bags. Ranger Rob poopy bags. Well, we have to go get some Ranger Rob poopy bags. Darn, too. you just never... Right. Do they have extra large for Drew? Yes. Not for me. I made, I made these Not for, for Drew. You, Drew. I, I'm potty trained, unless I drink a lot. So, uh, Heather, you may, I don't know if you can see the screen. <laughs> It'll take a second before you can see it. We also have the Ranger Rob poopy bags and rolls. So you can get them sheets or rolls. And uh, uh, we have refills for, because the one here I'm holding actually has a little dispenser. 
So uh, with your cute little dogs, you can have a little uh, fabric dispenser to put on your leash and use those little poopy bags. Um, they're really cute. And it's all at Amazon. But I'll have to go check those out. Because I have like a little, I don't know, it looks like a fire hydrant type of thing. And they're in the rolls on the, the tubes. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So you can pull them out of the little plastic out. thing. Yeah, I was the same, but it's a, um, our, we have a, a bag that comes out the side of a fabric dispenser because our bags yeah. are bigger. So the problem with the ones you're talking about, Heather, is they have to make the bag so small and, and it yeah, they are have small. handles just to fit in that little dispenser. Ours are a bigger yeah. roll and ours have handles. And we didn't want to make our bags smaller, so we made got a bag to fit our rolls. So, um, and they're cute. They're super cute. They're super cute. They're You're so, so cute. They're so super. They are. They're so yeah. cute. Oh my gosh. Coming. Huh? It makes Drew it, needs Drew, Drew needs some big poop bags for his uh, greyhound. Oh, and, I mean, and for his for his for his Great Dane or lemon scented. Oh, do they have a scent to them? Yeah. Oh. Make the poop smell. I can't make them the poop cold, colder, but I can certainly make the poop smell better. Now, see, that, that really, that one me right there. All you got to do is wait till the sun hits the poop, and then it dries it up, and then you go pick it up. So, you just tell Heather, me, tell me you're right first, I'll be back in a half hour. One more little thing for Heather on the poopy bags. is I'm, I'm holding in the screen here, but I we actually set, up, set a bunch you. of our poopy bags. And uh, it takes, there's about a 15 second delay when you see on your cell phone. Um, oh, okay. Anyway, so we took our bags and we put them in a little box and put them outside in the weather. In two months, they started to disintegrate. Yet they're, really? water, they're super strong bags. They are waterproof. You can hold water in a hole. They're really strong. But once they get in the weather and in the landfills, they actually break down. So they are, they are truly a, a eco friendly bag too so i had to get my two oh, cents in it pays for the radio show <laughs> What's looks that? like we're buying poopy bags oh you're gonna get you have a box on the way all right so that's a box of poopy bags darn right thank you thank you we got some raw poopy bags yep I'm we will have to do a review on those uh so we'll throw, we'll throw it in our daily deep blog and uh, by Drew. the way anybody does want to show the poopy bags and do a review we are in amazon if you sign up for a free affiliate account if you sell poopy bags and put a link your own link you can actually get a commission nice so, um, hey there you go dustin and aaron and and sweet travels yeah. there you go guys push the poopy bags we'll help you um oh, full-time versus part-time rving we kind of touched that a little bit and you're saying that you enjoy it more as a weekend warrior than you did when we we're full-timers and yes. I tend to be the same. It's like when I get to my RV now, which mine is in another state over at my sh on some property at my wife's mother and father's five acres. When we get to our RV, it's like a big hug. I know it sounds funny, but no, it doesn't. I mean, we lived in that thing. And it's like when you live in an RV, all you can think about is getting out of it. But when yes. you use your RV as like a okay. vacation home or a weekend warriors, it's like, it's like your best teddy bear. And, and I so felt that, like it was a mobile house. Like yeah, it was yeah, yeah. like, it was good. The problem with full time, the problem with full time that we had was a mental thing, but true. Because what if you're going down the road and get sideswiped? You got to bring your RV back into the dealer for three to four to five to six, even a half a year. Yes. About, yes. Where are you going to live in a hotel? Mm -hmm. like, Absolutely. Uh, you're I, I absolutely love right. being in the RV. I like the RV. I like it. It's just the thought was in the back of my mind. I'm driving down a road. If this thing gets sideswiped, if this thing gets ruined, I get a blowout, takes my skirt out, and I'm side. Totally. What am I going to totally Where am I going to live? I got my office in there, everything. What am I going to do? I totally understand that feeling. I felt the same way. And Did you? Uh, knowing that I have a base uh, really is helpful because if. Right. Um, and I've blown a tire and blown out the side of my RV, and it's not a pretty sight. And. Um, I had to put together with duct tape in the middle of uh, 90 miles out of Las Vegas. And then oh, uh, yeah. it cost me, I had to get all the parts shipped in, all that stuff. And luckily I had a mobile RV repair guy that could take the parts and actually refixed my RV.
But uh, yeah, I was terrible. I mean, it was like just broke my heart, and uh, I don't want that to ever happen again. And uh, yeah, no. well, that, that's actually a bare minimum what could happen on the road. I mean, I've seen oh, people take gas pumps and swipe the whole big metal thing in a gas pump, the concrete, and just take it, just take the whole side of the RV out, oh, slide it off. Terrible. I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a um, bricks and sticks and right. take off, use that as a central base, and take yeah. off six months at a time. And then yes. come back to the bricks, bricks and sticks, kind of recoup, regroup, and then go back out again. Or if you, you, know, you get sick or you yeah. need a big repair, you get sick, you have a home base to go to. Yep. Yeah. You know, the other thing I've noticed down here in Arizona that's very common is the park models and an RV are very popular. So a lot of yeah. some places will actually have a little park model with a they do the little L shaped ones with the Arizona rooms, I guess. They're pretty comfortable. And they'll have enough room in their lot to be able to put their RV in too. So it's yeah. the best right. of both worlds. You have a base that's affordable, especially when you start getting your retirement days. And you have the mobility of having an RV where you, if the Arizona weather's too hot for you in the summer, you could head north. And uh, both are yeah. can be cost effective enough for someone in fixed income. And I've uh, seen a lot of that down here because we have all these big mega resorts down here. And 70% uh, oh, yeah. of every mega resort down here is park models. So I'm going to make, I'm gonna make okay. a, I'm gonna make a creator smile right now because Sweet Travels did a huge review on one of those and stayed in one down in Texas. Huh? And I know Jim's listening right now. So if you want to see what, what uh, Rob's talking about, Swing over to Sweet Travel's channel. He does a great job, mm -hmm. and uh, he did a whole review on that and showed the little house and what that was like and then where he parked his, his big toter truck and the uh, huge fifth wheel that he pulls behind that thing. Nice. Oh, I know what you're talking about. So, I mean, it was really cool. But, yeah, I was thinking about a Sticks and Bricks or talking with Ross about actually getting a Sticks and Bricks on an RV park and, and getting that started because – Buying an RV park, from what I'm reading, is a twenty to thirty percent return on investment. I want to buy one. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you to move your butt. I got kids still in, in high school, and, and it's kind of kind of tethered here for a little while. But <laughs> when we get going, we'll get going. And I got to sell this place. But kids, there's some kids I know. Market, make millions of dollars. No, I need a nap. <laughs> School's not the thing now, man. It's a trade. You you have eight. You have eight. Heather, you got eight minutes. You can do it. Eight minutes. You're almost there. Oh, you saved all the time. <laughs> yeah, so I did. We do. That is a heads up to everybody. We have eight minutes left. Uh, I do have some more things on the list here. Um, okay. Ross has been really good about mentioning this. And uh, um, like I said, I'm still getting to kind of know Drew and stuff. But what is the real cost of RVing? Because you guys know we're watching all these RV tra tra travels and they, and they do these little, how much did it cost to stay in the RV this month? and all that stuff and, and of course they're all boondocking and they're doing things as cheap as possible which most people kind of still like to eat out and still like to have a nice rv park and they don't want to sit out in the middle of the desert and chase rabbits um if you're not if you're not gonna sit in if you're not gonna sit in the middle of that desert you're not gonna boondock all the time you better have a big fat wallet yeah. well wait a minute because there's <laughs> house and trails that you can go into which I know full timers are using, so it's not a big fat wallet. You can go into the thousand trails, pay that subscription, and you go in and out of that park system. So it's five thousand dollars a year. It's not five thousand dollars a year for the main, main membership. It is, yeah. For the membership, it is, but then it's only five hundred dollars a year after that. The yes. initial buy-in, and you can buy them used off of somebody else. I, I have a. Jim did it off of, yeah. of travels. Now, here, That's, now here in the Northwest, to argue a little bit against that is I, I had both zone one and two, which was Washington and down here in Arizona. It was useless to me in Arizona because as we we're working our way down to Arizona, everything was full. So yeah. I couldn't even use That's the problem. Room. Everything's full everywhere you go now. That yeah. You get this big membership and you can't even use it. Yeah, it's so like if you, you want to north spring. right now in the summer, Washington and Oregon, you'll have a hard time using your thousand trails unless you've made your reservations months ago it's like a ppo or an hmo you pay big bucks for health care but you can only you you know you got certain doctors to choose to from the from the like, HMO, HMO and the ppo you can go anywhere that's the same know, thing it's like in, in the military we had a saying it was proper pro, prior 
proper. <laughs> we had a saying that says if you get your shit together, it's not going to be a big deal. But it's uh, prior proper planning prevents piss poor performance. <laughs> wow. Very true. That's, you know, that's kind of where I'm coming with. So if you, in other words, what I'm trying to say is if, if like us, we got to book six months out and it's like a rolling thing. So if you kind of okay. go your route through one of the park areas that's Thousand Trails and you can pay that upfront membership, you can take advantage of that. And that does probably cut down on some of the costs. <laughs> I mean, so I'm not full time. I know for me to go out for a weekend for two days here in California, it's probably 200 bucks for the park, about $200 because gas is almost at five bucks a gallon out here. Oh. Um, 200, bucks for, 200 bucks for gas to go anywhere in the rig. And then all the food that we bring along, and my wife likes to go out and shop, so that's probably another two to three hundred bucks. So we're, dollars. we're for a weekend, yeah. We're getting up in there. If I can uh, just stop her from shopping, it'd be a lot better. But oh, well, look at uh, the bright side. We reduced your costs in poopy bags now, so that's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it, oh my gosh. So hey, we're getting to our last uh, oh three four minutes here. Um, I want to bo give both of you the opportunity to uh, le uh, leave any personal messages for our listeners. Please understand that this show will be viewed many 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 times after the live show. So if you have a personal message you'd like to pass on, that uh, kind of words of wisdom, this is your time. We are V TV baby. <laughs> Subscribe. And subscribe to Drew because I like Drew's channel better. Papa, is it Big Papa Drew or is it Papa Drew? Papa Drew's Family RV channel. Papa go ahead and subscribe. You just go to papadrew.com. And um, if you want to see what the parks are down here in Southern California and tips, trips, miles of smiles, and some goofy uh, stuff, uh, epic drone footage, really. Uh, oh, yeah, killer drone footage. You know, come down and subscribe to us. It's free. And uh, become a family member. Yes. Because it's, uh, it's not Papa Drew's family. It's our family, everybody that's subscribed to I'm going to come down and I'll make sure I bring extra SD cards because usually you lose them every time. You know what I'm saying? I'm not, uh, I didn't lose that SD card. You did. That was 128 gig with my Drew, family. Drew made me buy this hard drive. He made me buy it. He says, you need to buy it, Ross. We got we got 30 gigs of data today. We need to buy it. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Rob, for having us on. Yeah, Oh, Thanks, Rob. That was a lot of fun. Actually, uh, some of us kind of had, we've been crossing paths for years. It was just a, a great opportunity. Uh, thanks to Drew, kind of gave us the opportunity to bring us all together and, and uh, go through some of our life lessons with RVing and, and what we're doing today. And I think all three of us don't get the wrong idea whatsoever. We all love RVing. Yeah. We okay. just understand that there's things you need to know about and be careful that you're not being pulled into RVing for the wrong reasons. That is... Be um, careful what channel you watch on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, I and I, I, we have gone through many, many videos back and forth, um, and some of them we published and some of them we haven't. There are a lot of YouTubers out there that don't... Um, they only show the good parts, and they don't yeah. show everything about RVing. Um, there are some amazing things about RVing, but there are a lot of extras that people aren't aware of. So then they end up putting in the investment for the RV and then they have it for about a month or two and then they decide they don't want to use it anymore and they sell it. But it showed the goods and they just show the good part of it and then until they run out of money and yeah. then close their channel. Okay, close guys, channel. I got I to gotta wrap this up because we're under a time limitation, but I want to thank all you guys so much for doing a show with us. Um, I love to have you. We feel free to do more shows in the futures because there's so many things I know all of us like to talk about, and an yeah. hour is never long enough. So uh, I'm going to ask you guys to stay on your Skype, and I'm going to switch us to closing, um, and just stay silent there for a minute, and then when I come back on, we'll be off the air. So anyway, uh, thanks again for listening to RV Talk Radio. Thanks for joining us, our our, our crew here today, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.